Hi, I'm Paul, the Winning Shoe Guru. This is Marathon Handbook, and this is the new Jerag from Normal. An unusual name, to say the least, but um, most people are pronouncing Jerag with a silent K. The Normal brand is Killian Jornet's shoe brand. He left his long-term sponsor of Solomon a few years ago, and this is the brand he created in association with Camper, more familiarly known as a, a leisure shoe brand. And this is the trail running shoe. So this is the shoe that he developed himself personally to help him go on to win a lot of big races, including UTMB last year. So it's a shoe that's been around for about 12 months and it's now getting a little bit more widely available and wider distribution. The Jarag, £170 in the UK, $195. So it is a little bit punchy. It's up there with that kind of performance race shoe kind of pricing. It's very lightweight, 7.2 ounces, just about 200, 205 grams in a US 9. So quite light. It's right down there in that race shoe category. 23.5 millimeters in the heel, 17.5 in the forefoot. So we've got a six mil drop. True to size in terms of length and width for me. No plate in there, so it's what I would call a medium stack. It is aimed as a competition type shoe, although Killian does say that he has been doing a lot of training and put 1500 kilometers in his pair, and he had a lot of miles in the pair already that he won the UTMB in, in 2022. It's a very durable shoe, or at least it has been for Killian, and it features three kind of main um, technical aspects, if you were, from the sole, the midsole to the upper. So first up, Vibram sole, Metagrip light base outsole. So it's a 3.5 millimeter deep lug, and it's the lightweight outsole from Vibram. Of course, a lot of the European mountain races and trail races that Killian would be running in tend to be on drier, firmer, rockier type paths. So we don't need a mega deep. Um, lug on here so three and a half millimeters is kind of standard depth for a lot of Vibram's outsole patterns and that should prove good enough on relatively smooth runnable trails shall we say the midsole is a new material it's called exposure and it starts with a double e again like the name the normal it's n normal stands for no normal and I guess what they're trying to say is there's no normal go beyond the normal aim above that kind of thing I would say so so we've got the e exposure midsole now they say it's a newly developed form especially for trail shoes six millimeter drop it does feel like a p-bax type form it's got a kind of a very smooth shiny finish to it and a slight wrinkling to it it does feel like that and it does feel kind of springy stepping comfort that kind of uh, responsive nature to it one interesting factor is there's no inner sole so you can see inside there it's just a lining fabric that would normally have an insole sat on top of it but no insole in here to provide a closer connection closer feel of the ground i guess and help you with contouring and feeling the uh, the nature of the trail under your foot it is relatively roomy there's a little bit of space in there so you could put an insole from one of your existing shoes in there if you wish the upper is this um, matrix jacquard kind of knit and that's got kevlar yarn incorporated into it you can see from these stitching here I'm not sure how much kevlar is in the whole upper but certainly these bands here around the midfoot do reinforce it and kevlar of course a very strong material it is kind of almost ripstop construction to it it does feel very strong and on the upper we've got a kind of a rubberized toe bumper comes all the way around here quite good coverage across the top of the toes you're not going to come through the top here reinforce that that will provide a little bit of extra protection because this mesh despite being very strong is relatively thin it's just a single layer construction there's no additional padding in there no padding in the tongue it's kind of got a suede feel to it but very thin minimalist the only extra padding is around the ankle collar and a little bit in the heel here but it's relatively low relatively soft it does hook the foot, you can pull it in smooth around here, but there's a, there's a little bit of bagginess. I guess it comes from the materials that are stronger. They kind of don't flex as much. Not uncomfortable, but um, it, it's not a close wrapping over the foot feel. That's all the stats about the shoe. It's a very interesting model. It's a lovely day here in the UK right now. 
So I'm going to head out, get my gear on, get my shades on, and we're going to go and find some hills to give this shoe a go on. It's about uh, six miles in the bag this morning. I've been mainly focusing on the types of trail where the shoe's designs, alpine paths, stony gravelly paths, dirt tracks, forest, stuff like that. I don't think it's an ultra shoe for me. That said, I'm not, um, shall we say, a big time ultra runner. Maybe about an hour, half mile sent to me on the trails. I do prefer a little bit more cushioning, but I think a lot of older runners, shall we say, we want a little bit more protection under the foot. There is no insole in the shoe. I'm often wearing custom uh, fits, 3D printed orthotics myself, which are absolutely tailored to the fit of the foot. Lots of uh, contact under the arch. So I'm used to a very close fit. Here, foot's sat stood on the footbed directly. So you have got a little bit of space under the arch. I don't know, I think I'd want a little bit more support if I was running anything more than an hour. Ultra runners, let me know. What do you think about that? So very soft, high stack heights can sink very quickly and that negates a lot of the difference sometimes. But the feel of it, it does have a responsive feel, this midsole. I liken it to a road running shoe. It's got a, a light responsive feel. It's very flexible as well, and it does adapt to the ground very well. The grip, absolutely fine on this type of terrain. I don't think as well for an ultra type shoe, you want anything too aggressive. Bigger studs will of course have a tendency on firmer ground to push through the midsole. And when you've got a lower profile midsole, like on the Jouet, then you may feel that under the foot. That's not the case here. The studs are evenly spread. They spread out and distribute the pressure and the impact nice and evenly, so you don't feel them through the shoe. It's a very nice balance, to be honest. It's very flexible. You don't have that stiffness and the propulsion that the rods or the plate provide. But I don't think you need it in a trail shoe some shoes have got the carbon plate the nike ultra fly trail has got that now i think on a true trail shoe the ability to adapt to the ground is important and this shoe does that very well the fit is really nice it has got that very thin kevlar woven upper feels very strong and durable but it's very light as well and to be honest it's been great it's been really nice and comfortable um, it's got that big rubber protection bumper on it as well and whilst i've not encountered any particularly rough undergrowth today it has felt really good just a word about this little fella as well insta 360 go 3 camera you'll have seen a lot of guys using this to film running events very small clips onto your cap headband or whatever there um, and it gives you like the first person view perspective when you're running it doesn't weigh anything at all i think it's about Dush 20, 30 grams on there and a very clear picture. But back to the shoes. Overall, a nice, flexible trail racing shoe that should go the distance in terms of durability as well. So that's the uh, the normal or the no normal Gerag. Worth a try. Let us know what your favourite trail shoe is as well in the comments. And um, do comment, give us some feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. But for now, thank you and we'll see you soon.